Hello everyone, this is Kervin Huber. I was asked to make a video discussing how to deal with importing texture maps into Maya. And there's there's a bit of a trick to this because uh, there we can we can import either as a an absolute path or a relative path. And an absolute path will get you in a lot of trouble if you're submitting things to uh, the school for uh, rendering with the render farm and stuff like that because the the problem with an absolute path on a texture an imported texture is that it's attached to a drive number and if your drive at home is d and the drive at on uh, the render farm at school is e you're going to lose all of your texture paths so i was asked to make a video to show you how to make sure you're always dealing with relative texture paths instead of absolute so um First and foremost, what you need to do is you need to set your Maya project. So I have my Maya project here and I can set it two ways. I can go to the file menu and I can use the um, project window. Now the project window will create a new project folder with a bunch of, of default subfolders for Maya. So you can do that. Or if you already have a folder and you need to set your project, you can just use the set project function instead. And that's what I'm gonna do because I already have a folder. So let me show you that folder. So on my desktop, I have a folder called Maya Project. And inside here, I have a texture map that's already in there. And I have my Maya file in here. Now, one thing that I'm thinking might be happening is some of you are taking your texture maps and putting them into your project folder, which is great and then you're importing them in the Maya. It's still going to create an absolute path if you didn't set the project. So let me show you that. So a, a couple other things I want to point out here too. I have my Maya project saved as a .ma and a .mb. A .mb is going to be smaller, but if there's any corruption that occurs in your file, you can't fix it in a .mb. A .ma you can. So I typically save my project in both formats because a .ma is an ASCII file, which means you can open it up and read the code. And I've done that on my, many occasions. I've had to strip things out. So uh, it's good practice to save it in both formats. That's just a side note. All right, so let's take a look at how we shouldn't do this. So I have my Maya file in here. I have my texture map in here. That's a good start. But if I forget to set my project, it's still not going to work. So let's see how that happens. So if I open up Maya again, and now I'm going to create a, a material. So I'll open up my, um, where am I going? Rendering editors. I'm going to open up Hypershade. Oops, which is too big. Let me bring this down here so it fits the window. Ah, get that in there. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to create a new Lambert. So I have a new Lambert material here. And I'm going to come up here and import that texture map into the color attribute. So I'll hit the little checker button and I'll say I want to add a file. And then I'll come over here and browse for the file. So you'll see it's, it's going into my project folder right now. It may not. It, actually, it probably won't for you because since we didn't set the project, it, it doesn't know really where this Maya file exists. So what I need to do, well, I'll, I'll select the texture right here and I'll hit open. And now right here will tell me this is bad. <laughs> C colon users. This is my username, then my desktop. Then it goes into the project folder. Then it finds a texture map. This won't work if you if you zip this whole project up and sent it over to be rendered on the render farm and the render farm does not have this exact path and it won't, even if it is the C drive, it's still not going to be users, my username, desktop, and so on. You're going to lose all of your textures and they won't render properly. So let me put, take this out of the way again. So just to review what I've got here, I do have my, let me view large icons. I do have my Maya file in here and my texture map, but the one thing I forgot to do was set my project. So I have to set my project first. So you put your, your Maya file in here, you bring all of your texture maps in here, 
then you set your project, then you can start importing texture maps. If you import any texture maps prior to setting the project, you will create an absolute path and it's not gonna work. So let's try it the proper way. Let's add that one additional step here. So I'm gonna go File, and I'm gonna say Set Project, and I'm gonna say Set it to this folder, this project folder on my desktop. Now, it, 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 it likes to create a workspace in your project folder, so I'm gonna say create default workspace. And now I should be good to go. So now if I come back to my Hypershade window, which I think I closed accidentally here. Let's open up Hypershade again. And actually, I can remap this texture that I had already imported. Oh, and actually now it is relative because I set the project. So you see it no longer has a drive number attached to it. But let me go ahead and do that from scratch again. Let me start that over. So let me remove that. I'll come to the texture library here, remove the texture from there. So again, when you start your projects, you want to create a project folder, save your Maya project into that project folder, bring your texture maps into that project folder. But before you start importing your texture maps into Maya, you have to set your project. So I've already set the project. So now let's see what happens or what it looks like when I import texture maps now that the project is set. So I'll create a new Lambert. There's my new Lambert again. I'll import into the color attribute a file. I'll browse for that file. There it is, my brushed metal. And there we go. See, there is no drive number attached to it. That's what we call a relative path. It, the path is relative to where the Maya project is. And that's important because when you're taking your project folders and moving them to other systems, if you have a drive number and then all these different subfolders, it, it's, it's gonna break. So you have to make sure that your imported texture maps are all relative paths. And again, that's how we do it. We have to set the project before we start importing the texture maps. If you have a project that you've already imported, you know, 25 texture maps, you can set the, you, know, you, you can set the project and hopefully Maya will turn it into a, a relative path. But if it doesn't, you might just have to come in here and re-import each of your textures. Actually, it would probably be easier to do it here because all of your imported textures will be in the texture library. So you can just go through each one, select it, and remap it so that it's relative. So that should take care of a lot of the rendering issues we have, especially with the render farm. Again, because it's, um, it's a relative path versus an absolute path. That's what's getting us in trouble. So I hope that helps.